Hello humans, I'm Yan, and this is a section of wood that I cut from an ash tree which was dying because of ash dieback. I intend on using this piece of wood to make a print. This piece of wood has been drying for about half a year after I cut it from the trunk of the tree. You can use something that you've got straight from a tree, however you should leave it until it's at least touch dry before you start. First, I'm going to need to sand it down. Luckily, I have a belt sander. Once it has been sanded flat, and I've made sure that, although it looks like it has some scratches, it is perfectly flat, you then need to burn it. How I tend to know that I've burnt it enough is when it still holds a bit of a flame for a few for half a second probably, after you've removed the blowtorch, as you can see in the video. You heat it up and then it still holds the flame for a tiny bit afterwards. And at that point I feel like it's probably burnt enough and I can move on to the next stage. The next stage is taking a brush that has bristles that are, are quite firm and trying to rub out all of the charcoal. You want to be able to feel the grooves in the wood, and so I normally try and brush in a circular motion so it's, it matches the groove of the wood. After I've used the brush to brush out all of the excess charcoal, I then feel a section and think it's too smooth. I will then go back over it with the blowtorch and again with the paintbrush. Now once you're happy with it, you get some artist printing ink and you make sure that you can have something to roll the roller on so you can apply the ink to the piece of wood. If you are applying black ink, then it doesn't matter if there's still a bit of charcoal left over, but if you're applying a different color, then you will need to make sure that you've thoroughly brushed out all of the charcoal. I find the slightly spongier roller helps. Because you've burnt the wood, it starts to bend and it can be quite difficult to get the ink in all of the grooves. Then you can get your piece of paper and you can put it on the piece of wood that you've inked up and then use the back of a spoon to rub against the paper to try and make sure that the ink gets everywhere that it needs to go. After I realized that the piece of paper I had was slightly smaller than the piece of wood, I then used some tissues to put on the pieces that were not covered by the paper so that when I was rubbing I wouldn't accidentally rub a piece of ink on the other side of the paper. It just helps to keep the other side of the paper clean. And once you've thoroughly rubbed the back of the paper, you can then peel it off and see your piece of work. I then repeated the process and I made five prints. Previously, to test out how this would work, I did a smaller log and I also did some leaves around it. Thank you for watching.